Let's talk about uh, more practical uh, or let's say real PLLs. So uh, I'm going to talk about this structure and you will see that actually uh, why we use PLL because up to now we just, uh, we had a concept and uh, mostly we don't design that kind of circuit, but we had to understand the loop in order to come to this point. So uh, let me start from this in order to understand this topic better. So uh, previously we had this loop. If you remember, I said that we have, imagine we have an ideal reference, let's say it's operating at one gigahertz and then this VCO is operating at one gigahertz. So our loop tries to lock this VCO to ideal reference, so makes VCO follow this reference. Uh, so we said that this ideal reference is flawless. Uh, and uh, but this VCO is going to have some frequency fluctuations, uh, some uh, varying frequency. So we have to make this loop in order to fix this VCO. But now there's a contradiction here. Uh, I would say if we can make a flawless ideal reference which operates at one gigahertz, then why do I need to just make this whole thing? Yeah, I mean if this is ideal, if it works perfectly, I would just get rid of the PLL and directly connect to this uh, to my mixer, LNA, for example, imagine this is my receiver. And I use this, then why do I need all this thing? So that's, that's the problem here, that's the mistake we are making here. So uh, the thing is, we cannot make an ideal reference oscillator at one gigahertz. We cannot make a perfect oscillator which has low phase noise at one gigahertz. So then, then if it's like that, then why do we use PLL? So that, that's, that's the mistake we are making here. So real PLL is not like simple like this loop. We actually uh, have a divider in our loop and this is our practical PLL. And we are going to see how it works. So let me explain what we have changed here. The only difference here is this is going to be a frequency div divider. So this is a frequency divider, we call it divider. And for example, let's say if uh, this frequency is one gigahertz here, and this if this n is 10, for example, this is going to be 100 megahertz. This is a frequency divided, so one gig over 10. So uh, f out is going to become one gigahertz over 10. So this is what happens here, it's very simple. The idea is very simple. So now we can say that we have an ideal reference which operates at lower frequency. Yes, we can make that. And it's a crystal oscillator. Crystal oscillator has low phase noise compared to VCO. And it's ideal, we can call this ideal flawless uh, uh, oscillator. And the only difference is we cannot make a very high frequency ideal reference. It should be low frequency. For example, this crystal oscillator, it has low phase noise. Uh, most of the time, the phase noise of this oscillator, for example, we assume that the phase noise actually uh, is like constant. It's like a white noise, if this is frequency. However, for VCO, uh, v if this is a frequency of operation, for example, so here, we are going to have something like this as our phase noise. So uh, this is the difference. This is the basic, this is what happens in real life. We can make an ideal reference, but just in low frequency. So we make this loop and it just works exactly like that, like the previous one, but we have frequency divider here. So, the, so with using a frequency div divider, we translate VCO output to lower frequency. So and that's an example here. For example, let's say the ideal reference is 10 megahertz. Again, we have all the things here. The VCO is one gigahertz, but the divider's output is again 10 megahertz. So this 10 megahertz is going to compare with this 10, 10 megahertz again. What happens here is going to cause the same problems at the input of this PD. So if this is VCO is falling back, this 10 megahertz frequency is going to fall back. Or if it is faster, this is going to be faster too. We just change this frequency, just divide it, but the, the behavior is same. And this time, instead of comparing 
the ideal reference with uh, VCO output, we compare ideal reference with VCO uh, divided by some, some number. So, and how can we tune? This is very simple. If we change this N here, we can tune the frequency. For example, if this is uh, 10 megahertz, if N, let's say if N is uh, equal to 100, at the output we are going to have uh, one, uh, 1 gigahertz. If this N is 101, at the output we are going to have 101 times 10 megahertz. So 100, 1000 basically 10 megahertz. And uh, if you see this n is integer here, so it, it's always, uh, it accepts in integer numbers. So 100, 101, 102. Later on, at the end of this course, I'm going to uh, introduce you fractional PLLs as well. But for now, let's assume that this is integer. We call this integer PLL when, because our n is integer. For example, n is 100, but n cannot be 100.1 for now. Just, uh, I don't want you to get confused, but we have this case. This is integer PLL. This is fractional. And later on, I'm going to talk about these things. For now, let's assume that uh, we have integer numbers. So, uh, for this part, I'm not going to derive the equations for this. It's basically the same thing. This is basically the same loop. Same loop, but here, remember if we, we said that the, uh, the H close is equal to H open 1 plus beta H open Previously, our beta was 1, but now our beta is going to be 1 over n. So that's the difference. Everything is same. And I want to derive the transfer function for, freak, uh, for this kind of PLL. This is, an, uh, this is a homework for you. Imagine that we have previous omega LPF, what we designed for previous loop. And now we are, we are introducing this division. What is going to happen to my stability? My stability is going to improve or degrade. This is another thing I want you to think about it. So uh, I want you to drive the open loop, closed loop, like uh, for example, what is H open here? What is H open? What is uh, beta? I actually told you beta. What is beta times H open? What is uh, H close? Uh, and what is the expression for damping factor omega n? It's very good. It's a very good practice that you can do by your own. And then you can use MATLAB again for the same system. This time, imagine kVCO times kPd is equal to 100 megahertz. My m, my division ratio is 200. Again, I want you to find the omega low pass filter, omega and omega. You just repeat everything using the MATLAB code. I'm going to provide you the solution. You don't have to worry about it. Maybe, maybe you can solve this, but I strongly suggest you that please, please don't take a look at the solution because if you take a look at solution, you're, gonna, you're just gonna like, it's gonna be very easy for you. I really want to do this by your own. And if you really think that you can't do, then you can go ahead and check the solution. I, I'm, I'm providing you the solution. And also I have the uh, MATLAB file. You can also download for this homework and check yourself. So I have two uh, files actually. Uh, there is a homework folder you can check there. The solution is there. It's homework one solution. And also for MATLAB, again check the MATLAB folder. You're gonna have T1 PLLM calculations. So you can you can have everything here. You can f uh, I wrote. Thank you for watching our video. Please don't forget to subscribe. You can learn about this topic and more using our website. The complete course on this topic is provided on our website at www.rahsoft.com. Rahsoft is providing a complete certificate on radio frequency. The courses are complete step-by-step -step approach with quiz and examples and certificate of completion will be provided upon finishing each course. By taking the required courses in RF system and IC design with past status, Rahsoft would provide the Rahsoft 
Radio Frequency Certificate. Thank you. See you soon.